So, we will uh, begin our discussion of uh, entropy in this lecture. Uh, just as the um, um, cyclic form of first law uh, led to the uh, identification of a new uh, property namely total energy. You may recall that uh, we wrote uh, for the uh, first law cyclic form of first law as delta q cyclic integral delta q equal to cyclic integral delta w from which we identified uh, a, a new property the total energy uh, of uh, the uh, of the system. So, this is the total energy of the system. So, this property was identified from first law. In the same manner, we will identify a new property uh, named entropy uh, from uh, a cyclical law that we will develop for uh, reversible processes. That is what we will do in the first part of this lecture. Okay. So, we start by uh, uh, looking at the Clausius inequality. So, here the idea is to first replace process A B which is a uh, reversible process. So, A B is, is an internally reversible process and the idea is to replace this uh, with a sequence of uh, reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. Okay. You may recall that uh, the Corno cycle is composed entirely of reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal processes. So, these two processes actually play a very special role in thermodynamics, especially in connection with the second law. Okay. They are very, very much preferred because a um, uh, lot of the uh, equations and expressions that we develop simplify tremendously when applied to reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. So, it is always um, uh, desirable uh, to uh, uh, replace for instance any reversible process with a sequence of reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. Now, uh, I have indicated uh, the replacement of A B with A 1, 1 2 and 2 B. Okay. So, 1 2 is reversible isothermal and A 1 and 2 B are reversible adiabatic. So, this is a this is a qualitative illustration. Of course, uh, the requirement is that it should be uh, A B should be replaced with a sequence of reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic. It can take uh, any form. For instance, uh, we could say that you know the process is something like this if it is possible or we could also say that the process may be something like this. For instance, uh, okay. So these are uh, possibilities. There are, of course, um, infinite number of possibilities. So the hope is, of all these possibilities, there will be a unique uh, possibility which will exactly replace the reversible process A B. That is what we are hoping for, and that is what we will try to demonstrate here. When we say replace, what we mean is the heat interaction and the work interaction should be the same for process A B and for whichever one we are uh, and for the sequence of processes which we are using to replace process A B. That is the that is the idea. We will start with work and show that uh, first try to construct a sequence of processes of reversible and, uh, isothermal and reversible adiabatic and show that the work interaction is the same and then show that heat interaction will also be the same. Okay. So, now if you look at the process A1, notice that the work interaction for uh, this process is uh, shown in this shaded area. It is colored red to denote the fact that the work interaction is negative. Notice that the process goes uh, from, uh, from state A to the left to state 1 and in this uh, PV coordinates, it would imply that this, is a, uh, this process has a, a negative work interaction. Okay. So, next we move on to process 1 to 2 and as you can see here the work interaction for this process is shown shaded here and it is uh, shown in green color to denote that and the work interaction is positive for this process. Now, we have process 2 B and as you can imagine the work interaction for process 2 B is also negative like uh, A 1. So, the net work interaction for process A 1 a 1, 1, 2 and 2 b would be the algebraic sum of all these uh, uh, 3 areas that we just showed. So, basically we add them up algebraically with the sign taken into account and that would be the network for uh, A 1, 1, 2 and 2 b which we expect will replace A b. 
So, if you um, uh, add up the areas algebraically, you end up with, um, uh, uh, with, the, with the situation like this. So, here we have a positive area. There is one uh, positive area which is uh, over here and a small uh, negative area here and a blank area here. Now, remember the area under the curve uh, for process A, B is this. So, this is the work. Okay. So, this area must come out to be exactly equal to this. Now, this is uh, equal to this almost okay, except for this blank area and this positive and negative pieces. Okay. So, if these were adjusted somehow, then the area net area for A 1 2 B will be equal to W A B. So, in other words, we want W A 1 2 B to be equal to w a b. So, how do we accomplish that? Now, if we uh, select an isotherm 1 2 whose temperature is such that the area of this green area. So, uh, area a 1 q is equal to area Q to B. So, if we select this isotherm such that this area A 1 Q comes out to be equal to area Q 2 B, then what we can do is we can take this green area and fill this Q 2 B with the green area. When you do that, this small portion is negative and if you remove the negative portion, then you can see that the area Q B R will be filled with green. Uh, color meaning positive work. So, area Q B R plus this green portion will then become exactly equal to W A B that is the idea. So, there is going to be only one reversible isotherm 1 2 which will satisfy this requirement. Okay. So, among all the uh, choices that we indicated earlier, I am sorry, among all the uh, choices that we uh, indicated earlier, there is going to be only one isotherm which will satisfy this requirement. Okay, and the key requirement is area A 1 Q equal to area A, I am sorry, equal to area Q 2 B. Okay. So, area A 1 Q equal to area Q 2 B. So, we select this isotherm so that area A 1 Q becomes equal to area Q 2 B. Then the net area under the curve for A 1 2 B uh, is such that W A 1 2 B is equal to W A B. So, we have now uh, shown that the work interaction for the sequence of processes A, uh, for the sequence of process A 1 2 B is equal to the work interaction for A B. Now, let us turn to the heat interaction. Okay. If I apply first law to process A B, this is what I get delta E A B equal to Q A B minus W A B. Delta E A 1 2 B is equal to Q A 1 2 B minus W A 1 2 B. Now, we have already shown that this is equal to W A B. Okay. Now, delta E A 1 2 B is also equal to delta E A B since uh, E is a property and it depends only on the initial and final states and not on the intermediate states. So, this means this is also equal to delta E A B. Okay. Now, if I compare these two expressions, I can see that Q A B is equal to Q A 1 2 B as written here. Okay, if I compare these two expressions. So, W A 1 2 B is equal to W A B, Q A 1 2 B is also equal to Q A B, uh, A B, which means that any internally reversible process may be replaced entirely by a sequence of reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal processes, which is actually a very, very uh, uh, important uh, uh, statement because you can, you, anyone can construct in uh, theory any reversible process or any reversible cycle. What this allows us to do is to replace each part of that cycle with, uh, uh, with a sequence of reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal processes which will uh, simplify the analysis enormously. Let us see how this happens. So, here we have an arbitrary internally reversible cycle. So, 
is an internally reversible cycle. Okay? So, what we have drawn in this PV space are a sequence of reversible adiabats and reversible isotherms. So, the blue lines are the reversible isotherms and the red lines are the reversible adiabats. Now, we focus our attention on process A B. So, A B is a reversible process, internally reversible process. So, we uh, replace A B with A P Q and then B. Just like what we did before, we replace A B with a P, P Q and Q B and you know that the isotherm P Q will be such that uh, the work and the heat interaction for process A B will be exactly equal to the work and heat interaction for the sequence of processes A P, P Q and Q B. Similarly, we just go down along uh, this along we slide down along these two reversible adiabats and identify this segment of the reversible cycle C D which is in the opposite direction. Notice that this part of the cycle runs in this direction, this part runs in this direction. So, C D is replaced by C S, S R and R D using the procedure that we just outlined. So, A B which is a portion of the uh, arbitrary reversible cycle is replaced with A P, I am sorry is replaced by A P. P Q and Q B and C D is replaced by C S, S R and R D. And I can do the same thing for each one of these uh, segments right. I can do this for each one of these segments. So, the entire cycle I can do this for the entire cycle. I am identifying pairs of uh, small uh, segments on the forward or top portion of the cycle and on the bottom portion of the cycle, both of which are bounded by the same reversible adiabats that is very, very important. Now, notice that in this, in this construction, notice that A, P, Q, C, S or A is a Corno cycle. A, P, Q, C, S or A is a Corno cycle bounded by these two reversible adiabats and P, Q and R, S as the reversible isotherms, which means that the entire cycle can be replaced with an infinitely uh, infinite number of infinitesimally small Corno cycles that is the most important thing. So, the development that we started out with namely to replace any reversible process entirely by a sequence of reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal processes allows us to replace any reversible cycle with an infinite number of infinitesimal Corno cycles. Okay? So, as we said before, uh, this is a small Corno cycle. So, the entire reversible cycle may be replaced by an infinite number of infinitesimally small Corno cycles. Now, for each of these Corno cycle, I may write delta Q H over T H equal to delta Q C over T C or rearranging this, I may write this like this. Now, again, we are only requiring the uh, infinitesimally small Corno cycles to be internally reversible. <coughs> So, T H and T C <coughs> are the temperatures at which the engine receives the heat and rejects the heat. It is not necessarily the temperature of the reservoirs. Okay? So, we require only that the cycle be internally reversible. So, if I apply this for the infinite number of uh, small Corno cycles that we have, then I may write it like this. So, the, here is a summation across all these cycles. What is that this negative sign? Uh, actually indicates the fact that this part delta q c over t c is on the lower portion of the cycle. <coughs> if I allow my sign convention to take over, then uh, delta q it will be positive if it is on the upper part of the cycle. So, delta q will be positive on the upper part of the cycle and delta q will be negative when it comes on the uh, lower part of the cycle. So, which means that I can actually combine these two and write it as a single term like this delta q over t. 
and the term will automatically become positive or negative depending on which part of the cycle we are in. So, we may write and replace this sum because it is an infinite number of infinitesimally small Carnot cycles, we can replace the sum with an integral cyclic integral and write it like this. So, cyclic integral delta q over t equal to 0, which is called the Clausius equality and it is uh, applicable for an internally reversible cycle. Now, in the general case, if the engine is internally irreversible, then for the same amount of heat supplied and the same reservoirs, okay, if the engine has internally irreversible days, then obviously it will develop less work than an internally irreversible engine receiving the same input and the same reservoir. So, if we give it the same delta QH and if the engine uh, develops less work, that means that the engine rejects more of the heat that is given to it when compared to an internally reversible engine. So, an internally irreversible engine rejects more heat uh, than a comparable uh, reversible engine. So, which means that delta q c irreversible is greater than delta q c which uh, was for the internally reversible engine. Which means that if I actually look at this uh, sum what was 0? Now, remember this remains the same because delta q h for the irreversible engine is the same as for a reversible engine. T h same, same reservoir, T c same, same reservoir. Now, if delta q c irreversible is more, then you can see that it is very easy to see from this that this sum will become negative actually. Okay? So, cyclic integral delta q irreversible over T is negative or we can combine the two uh, statements and write in, in general write it like this cyclic integral delta q over t is less than or equal to 0 or if you do not like inequalities we may write it as cyclic integral delta q over t is equal to minus sigma int where int stands for internally reversible uh, I am sorry where int stands for internal irreversibilities. Okay? Sigma int is 0 if the cycle is internally reversible and sigma int is positive if it is internally irreversible. Okay. Again, we are talking only about internal irreversibilities. So, this is known as the Clausius inequality. Remember, irreversibility can be present or be absent, which means that if it is absent, sigma int is equal to 0. If it is present, sigma int is positive. So, sigma int cannot be negative. This is uh, probably a uh, much more uh, convenient form of the uh, uh, of the uh, law to use because um, inequalities are avoided and we have equalities with this understanding which is much easier to remember. So, uh, throughout this lecture we would write, um, uh, we would not really write it as a Clausius inequality, we would write it as a Clausius equality with a non-zero right hand side. So, the, uh, the important takeaway from, uh, from this uh, uh, set of uh, slides is the following that we can replace uh, any reversible. So, we started with this sort of an assertion, uh, we replace, uh, we want to replace a reversible process A B, internally reversible process A B with a sequence of reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic. Why reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic? Because a Carnot cycle is composed of reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic process and these are very, very simple to analyze. And so, we, uh, we do that. We showed that it can be entirely done. There is going to be one reversible isotherm which will ensure that the reversible uh, process can be replaced by the desired sequence of adiabatic, I am sorry, reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. Okay? So, we built upon that we went from a single reversible process to a, an entire reversible cycle and we showed that an entire reversible cycle may be replaced with an infinite number of infinitesimally small Carnot cycles, which then allowed us to write this for a uh, reversible uh, cycle and this for an internally irreversible cycle. So, now 
just like uh, what we wrote down earlier similar to the first law for a cyclic process executed by a system in which cyclic integral delta q minus delta w over 0. Now, we see that cyclic integral delta q over t is 0 for an internally reversible process executed by the system which means that the integrand should be uh, the differential change in a property we write this as ds and this property s is called the entropy of the system. Okay, notice that ds is equal to dq over t reversible. Okay. Once we have identified s as a property then it does not matter how the system travels from one state to another because s is a property it depends only on the end states and does not depend on the initial and final states. Okay. So, if we integrate this for example, let us take uh, this reversible process. So, this is a reversible process. So, uh, if I evaluate integral delta q over t reversible from 1 to 2 then I get the following. So, I get delta s equal to s 2 minus s 1 final minus initial 1 to 2 delta q over t reversible. Now, process B is an internally irreversible process between the same states, but since entropy is a property notice that entropy change in uh, you know in process B entropy change for process B is the same as entropy change for process A is equal to S 2 minus S 1 because entropy is a property. However, delta Q and other things will be different for process B when compared to A. Okay, let us see how delta Q over T reversible and delta Q over T irreversible how they compare uh, between processes A and B. So, what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, uh, run A because A is an internally reversible process. I can run this in the forward or reverse direction. So, let us run process A in reverse okay, and denote this as A inverse. Now, we get a cyclic process. We go from 1 to 2 along B and then come back from 2 to 1 along A inverse. So, we get a cyclic process and from Clausius uh, inequality we know that uh, for an irreversible cycle cyclic integral delta Q over T is equal to minus sigma i and T and cyclic integral delta q over t itself may be written as uh, two terms as a sum of two terms 1 to 2 cyclic I am sorry 1 to 2 delta q over t uh, b and integral 2 to 1 delta q over t a inverse. Now, a inverse is a reversible process. So, this is simply equal to entropy change final minus initial. So, final in this case is 1 because the process runs from 2 to 1. So, s 1 minus s 2. And this we cannot evaluate quite easily, so we leave it like that. Okay. So delta s, if you rearrange this expression, delta s, which is s two minus s one, is equal to integral one to two delta q over t uh, evaluated along B, which is an irreversible process, plus sigma int, which is the internal irreversibility. In fact, we can actually drop this B and simply write this as integral 1 to 2 delta Q over T. If 1 to 2 is traversed along a reversible process, then sigma int will automatically become equal to 0. You may recall that that is how sigma int is defined. Sigma int is automatically 0 for a reversible process. So, if we traverse along a reversible process, this will disappear and this will become 1 to 2 delta Q over T reversible, which is how it should be. Otherwise, it can be used for any general process. The only difficulty is sigma int is uh, not uh, easy to calculate. In fact, sigma int is actually impossible to calculate. We have not really said how to calculate sigma int. Sigma int is uh, a theoretical construct which is 0 or non-zero. So, it is actually used for qualitative interpretations. It is never meant to be evaluated because it, uh, we cannot really come up with an expression that we can use for evaluating sigma int. Nevertheless, this expression is very useful from a qualitative purpose to compare uh, entropy change for different processes or to see how entropy is going to change during a process. 
Okay. For actual calculation of entropy change in a process, we will still use uh, a reversible process between the states because then uh, we can easily integrate quantities. Okay. Whereas, with an irreversible process, it is not possible to get sigma int. So, we will not do it that way. So, what, what we are saying is any you take any process, let us say let us say this is state 1, this is 2, let us say we have a process, I am sorry. Let us say this is an irreversible process and we want to calculate the entropy change between these two states. So, we cannot calculate the entropy change from this expression because sigma int is not known. The only thing we know is sigma int is positive. Okay. So, what we do is we construct any convenient reversible process between 1 and 2, any convenient reversible process. So, we may uh, construct say for example, 1 or 2 uh, reversible processes like this. So, this is internally reversible, this is internally reversible. So, we connect 1 and 2 with any uh, uh, convenient reversible process, calculate the entropy change because now entropy change is simply integral delta q over t reversible, sigma int is not there. So, we can calculate delta s and it will be the same as the entropy change for this process because the initial and the final states are the same. So, let us look at this equation. So, this is a very general equation. So, this is a very general equation. So, let us take a look at this equation. So, the left hand side has delta s which is the entropy change of the system. So, the entropy change of the system can be positive, negative or equal to 0 which means the entropy remains the same. Okay. It is possible for the entropy change to have uh, any sign negative, positive or be equal to 0 for the of the system. Okay. The first term on the right delta q integral 1 to 2 delta q over t represents entropy transfer. You may recall that heat is defined as an interaction of the system with the surroundings. Okay. So, heat is an interaction of the system with the surroundings which means that this term will be non-zero only if the system interacts with the surroundings and there is transfer of heat as a result of the interaction. Either the system rejects heat to the surroundings or the surroundings supply heat to the system. If the surroundings supply heat to the system, then this term delta q is positive. So, that means entropy transfer is positive. So, surroundings are transferring entropy to the system. If the system rejects heat to the surroundings, then delta q is negative based on our sign convention and the system is actually uh, rejecting entropy to the surroundings. In other words, the entropy of the system decreases when it rejects heat. The entropy of the system increases when it is supplied with heat from the surroundings. So, when the surroundings supply heat to the system, the entropy of the system increases and the entropy of the surroundings decrease because they are supplying heat to the system and vice versa. When the system rejects heat to the surroundings, entropy of the system decreases and the entropy of the surroundings increases. Now, in case the process is adiabatic, there is no uh, entropy transfer, delta q is 0. So, there is no entropy transfer. Now, sigma int here is entropy generation. So, the important thing here is entropy generation because these are internal irreversibilities, entropy is being generated internally within the system. In contrast to this which is entropy transfer from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. Here we have entropy generation due to internal irreversibilities and it can be 0 if, there is, if the process is internally reversible or positive if the process is internally irreversible. So, the net change uh, in entropy of the system depends upon these two terms. So, depending upon the, the sign and magnitude of these terms, the entropy change of the system can be positive, negative or equal to 0. Okay. Any, uh, any of these three combinations is possible, whereas the uh, entropy generation is either 0 or positive. Entropy transfer can be positive, 0 or negative. Okay. So, the total entropy change of the system is the sum of the change due to entropy transfer plus sum of entropy generated due to internal irreversibilities.